Hello everyone and welcome to the 59th episode of Nina in Knitting. My name is Nina and uh, I live in Yugoslavia in central Finland with my husband, our two kids and a dog whom I presume will hear panting around me at the moment. So don't be disturbed. There are no weirdos around here except for the dog who's over there. <laughs> Uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Ninima, and on Instagram I am uh, Nina Knitting. Uh, you'll find that info on the the screen. Today it is June the seventeenth, and I'm in the countryside. It's been a lovely, lovely weather for uh, quite some time now in Finland, which which is great. In my opinion and uh, uh, kind of exceptional too uh, so I'm enjoying it and oh man the Sun is right in my eyes so I hope this will not be too weird for you but yeah so uh, today I have a uh, four maybe four finished objects I think I have a whip um, I'm gonna uh, continue recording tomorrow uh, maybe if I have made some progress uh, in my whip then I'll show it to you but if I haven't I'll just not show it because I just started it um, and uh, yeah I have one project that I am uh, eagerly waiting to cast on so so I'll be talking about that if I remember, because I don't always remember, that is. Um, I hope you can see my wisdom highlights here, because <laughs> of the sun, uh, sun. Yeah, I like my hair. I don't want to dye it. I'm not 20 anymore. Okay, my first finished object is on my lap and ah, it's so hot. <laughs> Great. Uh, my first finished object is the Manzo cardigan by Berengère Caillou. And I'll try and uh, ask one of my lovely kids to take some photos of me wearing this in this sunlight. Um, so if I have managed to get one of them to do that you'll see them on the screen <laughs> but yeah so this is the cardigan that I have been uh, knitting for a while I've shown it uh, as a whip before not last time but uh, in the episode before the last uh, I knit size large of the uh, cardigan and last time I'd knit it, it's a top-down cardigan, so I had knit uh, down to here, and this is what I finished. And then uh, the sleeves, I had to rip back. So this is how long or to which point I rip them back. Because uh, last time I talked about this cardigan, uh, I mentioned that since I was knitting the sleeves two at a time on magic loop I found the gauge was looser than in the body even though I was using the same exact needles and all that I used a 4.0 millimeter knit pro interchangeables for the cardigan and in the end I had one uh, cord in the body one in one sleeve and one in the other sleeve because I uh, ripped the sleeves back and then I started doing them magic on magic loop one at a time. Um, the original pattern, well, it starts here in the neck. Let's see, yeah, it must be in here. You do a provisional cast on and then you start doing this uh, sort of two by two ribbing plus an eye cord edging. So it's purl two to one by one uh, cable twist, purl two, etc. And then the eye cord. Um, and once you had done a number of repeats of that, 
you put the stitches on hold and then you undid the, the provisional cast on and you did the same in the other direction and then you um, picked up some stitches from the edge in here and then you started doing raglan increases and continued with the neckband so that was really nice uh, I really like that I have not done uh, real one by one cables these are actually uh, something I, I was knitting knit two together but don't st uh, don't lose the stitches from the left um, needle and then you pick up one of the stitches again and then you knit it um, I've seen it on YouTube and uh, there's a tutorial so I'll try to find it and link it in uh, the description box where you will find my um, project my the the links to my projects on Ravelry and all the info will be in there. The yarn I used here is something that I got from a person who was uh, getting rid of her stash. She had this pir Ohut Pirkkalanka. It's 100% wool. It's not a merino, it's a plain wool. And uh, they are 400 meters in 100 grams, so it's a fingering weight yarn. I had it in four different colors, as you can see. Um, I started with the lightest of the blue, then I did a few rounds of the green, then I did the sort of uh, medium blue, did some in green, and then the, the darkest blue, and then um, finished with the green, because that's... Uh, I knew that that is how much I needed of the yarn and I used uh, 350 grams I think yes of yarn so I have just a little nugget of the blue yarn and a little nugget of the green yarn left so I used it all up and uh, oh yeah when I was knitting these on my 4.0 millimeter tips, uh, which I have used quite a bit, and uh, my set is one of those who where you have the um, the tips are uh, out of wood. It's a symphony, I think, and um, the varnish, yeah, I think it's a varnish, <laughs> has started to go bad on the very ends of the tips and uh, I start I, I stand had some sandpaper and tried to smooth in them with the sandpaper but still it was not a very nice experience uh, I am dreaming of a interchangeable uh, set from Chaogu but they're mighty expensive <laughs> so uh, maybe not maybe I'll just have to get myself a new uh, pair of 4.0 millimeter needles from knit picks knit pro but we'll see um yeah haven't written anything else of that cardigan I really uh, enjoyed knitting it and uh, it ha doesn't have any buttons so it's one of those buttonless cardigans but yeah very nice and very hot it's like plus 30 degrees Celsius I think right now still and it's let me see if I can see the, what time it is uh, Yeah, it's 20 past 7 p.m. It's still very hot. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> okay, uh, my uh, second finished object is something that you can see in here. Because I needed a keychain. Because 
Uh, I have a lot of summer clothes where I don't have pockets or if I do have pockets, they're not good. <laughs> don't want to put my uh, keys in them. So I needed a keychain. I had one of these things already, these clasps or whatever. Uh, and I was going through Ravelry trying to find keychains, but didn't find anything that I liked. But then it occurred to me that maybe I could find some necklaces which I could turn into a keychain. And I did. There was one called Necklace by Marianne Decker's Ross. Or, well, you'll see it on the screen. <laughs> and I. So I crocheted this and this is the same yarn I used for my onion bag that I had last time. I had have it in two different different colors and um, I used a 2.0 millimeter hook and I made this necklace that I had turned into to a keychain and does the trick and it's actually kind of pretty so win-win just a little bit of something and then my third finished object is something that is has been on my needles and as a whip and as a ufo for one of for, for a period of time they are my <laughs> woolen pants here they are <laughs> this is a pattern called rhoda from drops design it's a free pattern, as was the pattern for the necklace. Uh, Caillou, uh, Béranger Caillou's uh, uh, Monzo is a paid for pattern. I think it was like five euros fifty or something. So not bad. Um, it's available in English and French. This was in English and in Dutch, I think. And well, Drops designs are in multiple languages. I used the English version, but uh, I didn't really do it like <clears throat> specifically as in the the pattern. But yes, so Broda, I used my 4.0 millimeter that's US size six chow go needles when I was knitting these. And the yarns I have here are all fingering weight yarns, and I was you uh, holding them double, so it's the equ equivalent of a DK yarn. And um, I use scrapped most scraps, more or less, um, longer, smaller, and uh, bigger quantities of scraps. And I was. Uh, doing helix knitting, knitting or helical knitting all through the pants except for the uh, short rows and uh, I used I, I uh, knit size large which was the size that I uh, was what, the size that I knit my cardigan in also um, and I started these on April 16th or something last year so in April last year somewhere in mid-April and uh, I finished them today <laughs> so it took me some time but yeah so there's the two by two no two by something ribbing Two by two by four maybe ribbing here where you started um, the pattern just tells you to do some ribbing for a number of centimeters uh, I knew that I would want to put in an in elastic band in the uh, the waist or on the waist so I did a provisional cast on if uh, my memory serves me right and um, then I did some ribbing. Uh, I did some some of it uh, back and forth so that I would make an opening for the 
the elastic band and then I joined it uh, and did it in the round again until I had enough so that I could you know fit an elastic band here and then I started following the the pattern more or less I did have to shorten this uh, part this hip from the hips because uh, I found it was too long so that's a modification I made um, and then uh, I was doing the legs two at a time on magic loop uh, which was kind of fiddly because I was trying them on every now and then but I just wanted to make sure that I had uh, that they were the same length and that I was doing the decreases uh, in more or less the same places or on the same rows. Um, if I had been smarter, if, I, if I, I'm sorry, if I were smarter, uh, if I had, let me take that, uh, uh, rephrase that one more time. If I had been smarter, because that's the correct way. <laughs> I would have uh, done the legs in ribbing too. Uh, that way, you know, they're more, they're closer to your thighs and your legs. But since I did them in stockinette uh, and there were some places where I sh uh, could have done decreases more often, uh, for example, uh, around my knees, they're a little saggy, but doesn't matter it, I don't think it's a, it's gonna be a huge thing and then one uh, another thing is that I could have done the decreases here on the outer side of the leg and not on the inside as I did but well I just didn't think it through I think I've been eating I've, I've been eaten by mosquitoes all the time ah! okay um so I'm gonna wrap this up and continue tomorrow but yeah this is how far I had gone last time I showed you these pants and so after after last time I finished the legs did some ribbing in the ankles and just a normal bind off and I have all sewn in the ends and everything um, since I was using a fingering weight yarn holding and holding them double and uh, the way I was doing it is that I was um, I had one strand from the outside and one from the inside and when I ran out of yarn the last bit had a loop because it was you know I was holding it double so when I continued with another color uh, and I didn't want to have to sew in any ends or I, I wanted to have a minimum amount of ends to sew in what I did was that uh, I did I took the new yarn I put it through the loop and had it for like 20 centimeters double holding it double like that and then uh, when I was sort of running out of the double part that's when I did I took the other end of the same yarn and I was holding it triple for a, a few stitches and that's what what you can see in here in the inside of the the pants so they in this part this particular white yarn is in three or three strands of it and I won't have to weave in these these ends I can just chop them off if I want. So that was trying to make it even easier. I hope that I will have put some photos for you. They're crazy, but I'm not gonna wear them somewhere where people can see me. I'll be wearing them uh, at home and possibly uh, under pan some other pants if it's very very cold next um, winter and of course midsummer's 
just around the corner. It's next Friday, mid Midsummer Eve. And that's, well, it's the longest day of the year. It's actually this year, I think it's on Saturday here, here in Finland. But um, what it means is that uh, the day is longest, but very often on Midsummer, it's it's not very uh, warm. It, it's sort of a joke around here. That, oh yeah, midsummer is coming. So yeah, so I finished my cardigan. I finished my woolen pants. I'm all good to go for midsummer. Okay, this is me uh, a day later in a slightly different uh, location, being eaten alive by mosquitoes. But uh, there are hundreds of them. Ah. Right, um, um, I mentioned yesterday uh, about my manzo that I uh, made it out of some uh, yarn that I got from a stash, and this is how much I have left. <laughs> Especially with the green one, I was kind of playing yarn chicken because um, I weighed what I had left of the yarn, and then I did... Cause, uh, I had finished the sleeves and I only had uh, the body to finish and uh, I weighed what I had left of the yarn then I did once uh, back and forth so I did two rows of of the knitting and then I weighed it again and just to determine how much yarn I needed um, and I wanted to have the same amount of ribbing uh, in the cuffs and in at the hem and uh, I actually made one or two rows less of the stockinette before the the ribbing in the hem and I was right to do so because this would not have been enough uh, for one row so that was good um, it's another day, it rained this morning and now, um, it's damp in here. The sun has come back, <laughs> so that's nice, but, um, mosquitoes are back here too, so that's not such a nice thing. Um, I'm just gonna grab my notes in here. So, um, my last finished object that I... Uh, can show you the fourth one is a pair of socks uh, I knit it uh, in a cowl that was held in one uh, Facebook group that I belong to it's um, called Voihan Vilosukkaits in Finnish and um, it's for socks <laughs> and they had a summer sock cowl where uh, they released a section of the chart each day and this is what I've <laughs> got from that I don't have my blockers in here and I don't even have the plastic mannequin feet so this is how I'm going to show them to you this was a cuff down uh, pattern and it was uh, designed for um, Novita Nalle yarn, which is a sports suite, 260, was it? I think, yeah, it's on the other page. Mm, yeah, 260 meters by 100 grams. But I had a different yarn, and this is Novita Purobatik, this yarn. And I had saved it for uh, bed socks. That was my intention and when i saw that this uh, facebook group has had a summer sock cow coming up i figured oh yeah i'm gonna use that novita puro but because it's the same weight right but of course i didn't check the weight of the yarn it didn't check the meterage um i just assumed after i had knit this with some 3.4 Five millimeter that's US size for DPNs I figured ah, the yarn does feel 
quite thick, heavy for these needles because I know that I use 3.5 millimeter for sports weight yarn. And this didn't feel like that. And no, it's not. It's uh, the same weight as Novita Seitsema Velista. It's uh, 200 grams by 200 meters by 100 grams. So it's more of a DK weight yarn. Uh, and of course, since it only had 200 meters, I ran out. <laughs> it's fine. This is 100% acrylic yarn, this Puro Batik. And like I said, I wanted to make some bed socks. And I knew that I di didn't have or didn't need uh, durable, like the kind of yarn that would be durable for wear and tear but it's it's a nice yarn and I do like the motif in here or the patterning uh, on the top of the foot I made mine a little shorter because I had heavier weight yarn uh, so um, I needed to finish them faster in order to have my size socks uh, it's only got ribbing at the uh, back of the, uh, the leg and uh, then there is a uh, ribbing ribbed heel flap uh, a Dutch heel turn and then it had some uh, eye of partridge uh, patterning on the sole of the heel which was kind of different um, in this yarn it, it's it's not night nice. I mean it's really really thick very um, because I had such small needles but uh, yeah it's pretty though uh, and what else yeah so the, the the other yarn in here so once I knew that I was running out of yarn I just went through my stash to see which leftovers I had in there and I found this this is Novita Ayaton it's a, a sieve some sort of a seasonal yarn or something that they only made a certain batch of I don't think they have they sell it anymore maybe they do I don't know but sort of got the impression that it's not one of their the kind of yarns that they're going to continue uh, fab fabricating producing <laughs> um, yes so uh, so yeah it's a hundred percent acrylic it's a totally different um, weight than the Novita Puro Batik this this is uh, 376 meters for 100 grams <laughs> so it's Quite a bit uh, lighter weight, but doesn't matter in in uh, in bed socks. They're pretty and and they're uh, they're ready. They're done. Let's see if I wrote down anything else. Um, no, no, oh, that's it. Uh, I didn't make s too much uh, progress on the whip I mentioned yesterday, so or at the beginning of the episode, so I'm not going to show it to you. But I will show you uh, some yarn that I got. It was sometime this spring, maybe. Ah, the mosquitoes are eating me alive. Uh, yes, yeah, so... um at the beginning of the year somewhere I was watching a French podcast called Bomme de Laine, I think it's her podcast she uh, was a yarn dyer and she was selling out she had decided to close shop and she had some discounts for the yarn that she had so I uh, ordered two skeins of this yarn Pomme de Laine and it's 80% merino superwash merino 20% bamboo yarn 
and four ply 400 meters for 100 grams and uh, colorway is called Ekuma and uh, if my memory serves me right it's it's in English sea foam but it's a really nice light blue bit of sort of tonal light blue with some blue very subtle speckles too so I have two skeins but I only got one with me here right now um, and this is something that I'm going to use next so I have two skeins which means I have 800 grams of, uh, 800 meters of this and I am planning to knit a sleeveless top and I was going through Ravelry some time ago trying to find a pattern for for one and um, well at the end I did find one uh, something that I will use when I knit or at least start start to use when I knit the top so um uh, the pattern I found is called Tejela, 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 uh, by by uh, a German uh, designer, Tanya Lomai, Lomai, Lume. Yeah, you'll see it on the screen. <laughs> um, for my size. According to her uh, pattern, I should uh, need 850, was it? I think 850 meters of yarn. I don't have that much. But um, I'm hoping to get the sort of garment I need. It's a top-down, kind of basic uh, top with a crew neck, I think. No sleeves, you start with one shoulder, do one part, then you do the other shoulder and then you join it together for the neckline and then you do the same for back or, well, if you start from the back, you do it yeah, for the front and then you join them together um, under the arms and then you knit down. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to play with with my yarn and see how sort of long I want to make it. I don't want a cropped version. Uh, it would not look nice, I don't think. Besides, I, I'm not a cropped uh, shirt kind of person. So, um, but yeah, I'm hoping to get what I need. Maybe I'll do some more decreases. I don't know. We'll see. In the next episode I guess okay so this is all I have for you this time um, this weekend is like I mentioned before midsummer here in Finland the longest uh, day of the year the the day where the nighttime is the shortest and um, there's usually some celebrations going on but now because of the corona mm -mm, it's likely to be a little more subdued I guess uh, but yeah we're here and um, we'll maybe do some barbecue or my husband will <laughs> perhaps uh, <clears throat> and then uh, then just hanging out really uh, today we had some thunder in the morning and rain as I mentioned uh, it's supposed to be better weather towards the evening and tomorrow so we should have like sunny weather uh, during midsummer but I'll only believe it once I see it because <laughs> it's not something we usually get yeah but other than that we don't really have much plans for the summer we'll see we'll just take it one day at a time and I'll be knitting my top and the socks that I didn't show you it's the whip that I mentioned 
Um, and maybe I have some other stuff to show you next time. When will that be? I don't know. That remains to be seen. But until then, I hope you have a nice summer and nice weather, the kind of weather you wish. And I hope you get, get some relaxation time. Bye. Hey!